This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. Danilo's free. And it goes to get wide. Danilo! First time we've seen them attack them and there's Brendan! Well, that's what I wanted to see Robinson do. Tyler Wani scores! And the sticky ground goes ballistic! Hello and welcome back to Red Side of the Trent as we reflect on another weekend of Premier League action and as Spurs ran out, 3-1 winners over Forest. Joining me to discuss and reflect on a few other things including Everton's points deduction and other weekend resorts are Reese Lane and Christian Brown. Hope you are all well. Before we get into it, just want to send our commiserations to Joe Kinnear and his family. Obviously passed away, unfortunately, over the weekend. Uh, manager we had in League One, maybe not our best manager, but nonetheless, uh, we pay our respects. On, championship, on the mate. Well, championship. Did he go into League One for a bit? No. I don't bloody know. Who Next. cares? In, in terms of that, down, unfortunately. Well, well, we'll we'll pay our respects anyway to to of Joe Kinnear and his and his family. Obviously, had a terrific managerial career at Wimbledon. If anyone remembers that in the in the nineties with, with the crazy gang. Um, but to start off with, guys, I'm not going to mention the team because it was unchanged and it was rightly so unchanged after a great mid midweek win. Um, but Christian, as as you were the man on the ground with me next to the, uh, uh, I'm gonna I'm not gonna brush over it but it was the Sung Hyun Min fan group <laughs> in, the, in the Tottenham home end uh, but what did you make of the start to the game uh, as, as Spurs dominated expectedly at the start yeah it kind of went as we thought it might go I mean, we also did our predictions you know head speaking really it's going to be very tough for us and as from the outset it shows I mean Spurs are a quality team I looked at it before as it, as it was coming out and I was like oh, this could be quite a long night for us but um, no I mean, FA started well I thought we were, I don't know if it was a case of us just being sluggish or them just stamped their authority pretty early I think I'm going to lean more towards the latter because I actually think we didn't do too much wrong it's just a case they were just very good to begin with and yeah, I mean, obviously we tried to drop their sort of fly with several fouls, which can be taken one way or the other. But ultimately, yeah, they're, 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 we looked like we were going to crack and thank, unfortunately we did. Yeah. Uh, Reese. obviously watching from home, uh, you probably get a different picture to us. So would you have changed anything? Like, would you have tweaked anything? Because it just seemed like we couldn't get a foothold on the ball. And every time we did, we just seemed to give it back to Spurs immediately. I mean, until the opening goal, I, I generally thought the game was being played at walking pace, really. It was like kind of a friendly feel. And you kind of thought with obviously Tottenham having most of the ball, as we expected, they kind of ramp it up a little bit of a game and score, which is unfortunately for Murillo what they did. Um, I mean, I don't... There'll be people saying I'm picking on certain players here, but you know, within what was it, 15 minutes? I think Yates had made four fouls, and to be honest, he he was probably lucky to get to the fourth foul before being booked. Um, I mean, so you're kind of losing that midfield battle straight away, aren't you? When you know Ryan Yates' strengths are hassling, and you know he, he's already on the booking after 15 minutes when you've got some real quality players in the middle, like James Madison, who, who he kept pulling down. So, yeah, um, I think up until the, the first goal, I thought it was a pretty sluggish start from us, and similar to kind of the Palace game, wasn't it? Really, where we just not started quick enough, and you know, we unfortunately was punished with a bit of. Um, I guess unlucky because, as we're going to discuss in a minute, but yeah, just a disappointing start for us overall, really. For me, yeah, I mean, we we we'll, we'll may as well get into it, Reese. So obviously, just before he, he uh, before Murillo scored an own goal, I mean, 
when is he eventually going to score this wonder goal? And I just hope it's in a forest shirt because he keeps trying. Like, I couldn't believe it. I like, literally, like, he's took the ball off Madison. And then I'm like, what the nerf is he doing? And then I'm like, oh my God, it's nearly going in. And then I think, <laughs> I think Tom, Tom, Tom mentioned next to me, he's like, if, the, if it was a little bit less windy, it might have gone in. I was like, I don't think so. But I mean, I think the, it's just the direction wasn't quite there, unfortunately. Well, the, the, the camera struggled to stay up with it. Um, so you just. I think they were showing a replay in the next video. All you see is this ball flying forward, and you're like, Jesus. And then, literally, as soon as it kind of did show Vicario running back, you kind of know, don't you, by the goalkeeper's reaction? Because if the goalkeeper's proper scrambling, then they're really worried. Vicario, I wouldn't say, was proper scrambling back. He was running back, don't get me wrong, but you can kind of tell, what, can't you, when they're really scrambling, they're like, I'm not going to swear, but who? Oh, I'm in trouble here. Yeah. Um, it's a great effort. I mean, with I mean Adley Gadiora, I mean, must have been tipping his hat. I mean, we always think that one that nearly went in against West Brom um, them mm. years ago. So, um, yeah, I mean, I mean Jamie Redknapp and Roy Keane said it would have been the best goal in Premier League history, which would have been a um, Something for. I mean, for he, he, keep, so, um, he, keep, he keeps trying these speculative yeah. efforts. I am expecting one one to get to put to come off. But let's talk about the goal. I mean, it's it's probably a well worked goal from Tot- Tottenham's point of view. But and I don't I, I don't think Marilla can really do anything more with what he with what he does. Like if Aina can give him a shout behind him, maybe is probably the only thing because he's stretching for the ball all the time for it, and he and he can't divert any other way. What what did you make of it? Um, to be honest, I thought Werner probably had Williams' number yesterday. Um, he was fast. You know, on that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, he's always been quick, Timo Werner. I mean, when Chelsea signed him, they, they decided to play him as an out-and-out number nine. And when I've watched him, I don't see him as that type of player. His movement's really good. He's, he's pacey, but he's not a natural finisher. So, clearly, Ange has decided that he's better off coming on from the left and I thought he gave Williams a hard time because as well Nico to be fair to him didn't really have much cover it was, it was kind of a lot of one-on-one situations against him and <clears throat> you know with uh, Werner's turn of pace he's put that into that corridor of uncertainty uncertainty to say don't they and Murillo's had to make a decision and unfortunately for him um, he's just got the contact wrong you know you know what could he do better is obviously to get a better contact on it and divert it somewhere else but he hasn't and it you know it was like I say a sluggish start and you kind of saw it coming to be honest mm. I mean Christian it, it kind of told and we I'm pretty sure you yourself was feeling the same sort of way you kind of think well here, here we go again the, the heavens might have opened because it seemed to be like a wave after wave of Tottenham uh, attacks but Matt Sells pulled off possibly one of the best saves of the season and you kind of go why weren't you here on or in August rather than in January because what a save it is from Johnson and that kind of seemed to give us a bit of a kick up the backside in my opinion it was definitely a turning point for the first half that save and um you're right I mean I think if we had sales from the start of the season we'd be talking about cost of mid-table destinations and whether we're going to be 10th 11th or 12th or maybe not with a deduction but you know what I mean I uh, He's again. Like, I feel this is it was why he was my uh, vote for player of the month for March. I had Williams seconds as put out on our um, pod page, but like I just feel that he's just offered such a calm influence at the back, and he's been, he's been so dependable. I mean, that was an outrageously good save from Johnson, and um, it was, it was, it was brilliant last night. And I'm sure we'll come on to him. Of course, he kept us in the game at a lot of, a lot of different times, but that save was brilliant, and it sort of like you said it sort of sparked Forest into life a little bit. It was sort of like right, okay, time to sort of. No, my turn now, and yeah, I mean, it showed very much. It was just, I don't know how it's like, you know, it's point blank for Johnson, pretty much, isn't it? Like, he hasn't really got a lot of time to react or anything like that. It's very instinctive, but yeah, outstanding save from Sells. And um, again, it's just so nice having a competent goalkeeper for once for the first time all season. It's just, like so nice, yeah. Well, stick, stick it with yourself, Christian. Let's talk about the wood goal because it's, it's a well worked goal from our perspective. Anthony Langer's finally back in the goal involvements. I mean, he looked like bloody road runner yesterday at times against the doggy. You know I mean, the doggy's no slouch, is he? Just uh, we'll get we'll get on to a bit more on Anthony Langer, but let's talk through the goal because Chris Wood is absolutely on fl- on flames at the moment. I I don't even know how to describe this bloke. He's like, well, 
he's the Kiwi Kane, isn't he? Was it 12 goals down the league? I think. Right yeah, so? I think so. Yeah. Goals. Was it nine yeah, in the no, last 10? Yeah, phenomenal. He's, I think uh, obviously, one thing that alerted me earlier on actually was like, you know, last week we were saying about how um, Doy kept flaming Tete in the Fulham game and how impressive mm. that was. And then I thought when that ball went over the top and Van der Veen just gained like, we seem to be running so like quick. two meters a second. It was ridiculous. That it was like, <laughs> I, I think like that. It was just like, ah, I'm not even sure Alanga could have dealt with Van der Ven, To be fair, that's but like, it was just stupidly fast how he got back to the ball. But no, um, obviously it therefore made a lot more sense to target the other side where he can't impact as much. And yeah, it was, I thought it was a really good move from Forrest. I thought um, we got we got the ball well. I think once we started showing a bit more bravery, we started looking after the ball a bit better. We started playing ourselves to quite some interesting positions and. No, we really started putting Spurs on the ropes. Like that, that was a sort of like the peak of a fairly sustained spell of pressure, which didn't really relent until the halftime whistle. Uh, it was a lovely interplay. I think it was Gibbs and Langer, I think. Um, or I think it was Gibbs and Langer through. And, um, I think Nico, yeah. Nico, Nico plays him. Was it Williams? Oh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah, lovely, lovely interplay. And then obviously the ball across. And then he's just, again, we also mentioned instinctive from sales. It seems instinctive from words and like just sort of. And that's a striker in form right there. He didn't even think, he just knew exactly where that ball was going the second it came to him. And yeah, Vicario had no chance, really. Brilliant goal. And he gave us something to celebrate, which was nice. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and then obviously, like as Christian mentioned, Reese, a bit of a barrage of, of forest pressure. And and we have to talk about Wood hitting the post. Um, I mean, it's a great move. Murillo to Aina. Aina's pullback, which is actually a successful one for a change. And, and Ryan Yates is running onto it and he does well to get the shot off in, into the corner. And I, 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 I generally thought Vicario had made like save of the season. And then and then I didn't realise he did, would have hit the post. I, I don't know what his thoughts were when he's like running up to that ball, other than maybe he's, thought, he's probably already scored. <laughs> Sorry, you made me laugh about the Van der Ven pace because Callum Hudson Odoi was like flat out and he just gave up because he just couldn't catch him. I was like, Yeah, yeah, maybe this high line, no wonder they can play with this high line then with pace like that. Very car war crest. But um yeah, it was um a nice move and Ryan Yates comes onto it. I actually thought Yates probably should have scored really. Mm. Um I think if he puts it to be fair, he placed it quite well. But if he'd have just placed that with a bit more power, I think he would have beat Vicaro. But you know, that's that he's hit the target, he's made the keeper work, and the and the, the big chance is the second. I mean, has and he scored probably just overconfidence, really, with the form he's in. He probably just thinks everything's going right for me. I'm just that confident in myself at the minute as a striker. I'm just gonna absolutely whack this and just basically bust the net. And unfortunately, he's just got his margins a bit wrong and it's it smacked the post and he has to he has to score them to um you know I, I can't I can't have a gripe too much at Chris Wood because his goals are gonna be if we do stay up a massive part of keeping us up at the minute because yeah um without him I think we would be in a world of trouble at the minute. Um so he should have scored no doubt about it. He'll be good to he hasn't scored. Would it had you know, if we'd have gone two or not, would I would have a fancied us with our defensive record to keep Tottenham out? Probably not, if I'm gonna be honest. Um, but it's all in hindsight whether that would have changed the outcome of the game or not. I'm I'm not sure. But um yeah, I'm sure he'll be kicking himself he didn't um make it thirteen for the season with that one. Yeah, I mean I think uh, it's an interesting uh point there, because I, I was gonna ask you and you kind of took words out of my mouth, so thank you for that. Um yeah, it's it's an interesting one to see if if we've gone two one up, what what would have happened? Because obviously, then Tottenham made two changes at half time at one one. Would they have still made them changes? I probably would have said yes because I don't think yeah. Andrew's very happy with Basuma and Pape Sar. They seem to stink up the gaff. Um, although I thought they were <laughs> they were pretty good, like for the first twenty minutes, and then they just lost all control. Like Danilo and well, Danilo and Gibbs White started to get on the ball a little bit more and actually start making things happen a little bit more for us and. It's just such a shame because it would have been interesting to see what would have happened because a lot of Tottenham fans who I spoke to afterwards reckons they would have just crumbled completely under the pressure of having to come back, though they've done it so many times at at the, their new stadium. So, yeah, it would have been an interesting. It would have been nice for us to have something to hang on to um, and it would have been it would have been a tetchy 
second half and we know what Forest are like. So, yeah, you're probably right, to be fair, Reese. I don't think a lot would have changed, but it would have been nice to see what would yeah, have happened. Yeah, of course. At, at least the one thing is Tottenham is, you know Tottenham are going to score goals, but you also know they're going to concede goals. So, would it would we have gone a bit, little bit more negative and sat in a bit and invited them on and sprung out a bit more on the counter? We don't know, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, it's all in. It's all in hindsight, in term, I'm afraid. Yeah. For Christian, second half, obviously, I, I mentioned uh, Ben Sinkur and Hoiberg come on for Tottenham. Um, that seemed to really change the game and they 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 kind of kind of gave him a kick up the backside as Sinkur's self safe gave us one and Unfortunately, Van der Ven is well. They're all queuing up really for for from a corner, which is taken short. We we discussed this just before we went live, and he's got a free hit at goal. And you can't give players of any ilk in the Premier League a free hit at goal because they just punish you in the end. Yeah, it was. I think the way I saw it was it was a hell of a finish, but I can see the other side of the coin in that. You know, obviously we could have done more, and yeah, naturally that's what you leap to. Forest could be more to defend it, but I mean, like, yeah, I, I, I just said that I just, as soon as I saw it, I was like, oh, he's done well. I thought it was going wide first, and I saw it just sort of creep in top corner. I was like, sometimes you hold your hands up and just say fair play. I yeah. think that was one of those times. I just to obviously can um, sort of go against the grain really in regards to Forest going two one up. But I actually felt that had we got that second goal it would have been very similar to the Newcastle game. And I also think that, we haven't mentioned it, obviously, that had Madison been sent off, and obviously with Morris going 2-1 up, it could have been, you know, we could be sat here talking about a very different conversation topic right now. I mean, oh yeah, I've completely forgot. I've absolutely brushed over that incident. I mean, interested to get both your opinions. For me at the time, and I think, Christian, you, you might you might agree. Um, I I when I've rewatched it at half time, I'm like it's a bit it'd be very soft, but equally at the same time, Morgan Gibbs White gets like barely brushed by Rodri on the throat, and he gets sent off. And I think Casemiro gets sent off against Will Hughes. And if it, and if it's Yates doing the, the reverse way, you you wouldn't grumble because you go well you've made you gave the referee a decision to make and you've done something stupid. Um. I'd like to get your thoughts both on it as well. Reese. I'll start with yourself. Um, it's a bit of a tough one for me because for all the good things kind of Ryan Yates does with his um, his niggling and that, etc., he has, I think, become a target for referees at times to basically say, get up. I noticed Michael Oliver doing it quite a bit against Fulham. There's quite a few times where he put himself on the floor and Oliver was like, no, we're not having none of that. Um, I mean, he, won, he, he fouled Madison that much. He wound him up that much. that He, he was stupid enough to do that, Madison. Um, is it a red? It, if, it's a tough one, isn't it? And I, I get why people are obviously not too pleased about it. I guess the caveat is, well, Felipe grabbed Bruno Fernandes round the neck earlier in the season yeah, and gets sent off. So I know that wouldn't have changed the game at that point because it was in the last minute, but you get my drift. Um, yeah. I kind of aligned with what Roy Keane said. And to be honest, Roy Keane would probably be biased towards us having played for us and having praised Ryan Yates quite a lot um, over the few years. And I've noticed Roy's praised him. So, you know, he says he's kind of in for them tricks to trade in tea and yeah, it's just it's just one of them for me. I think I think easily both could have been sent off and easily both could have been left on the pitch like there was. I mean, you know, Yates made the VAR symbol. I seen um, a guy on Twitter um, saying that well, that there was nothing in that because it wasn't excessive, but. You know what football fans are like. If if a player had done that against us on a yellow card already, I think people would be baying for a red. So, I mean, I, I I just thought personally the referee kind of evened it up. You know, there was a there was a time early on in the half where Yates had brought Madison down. He could have easily been booked Yates. Then he didn't book him. Madison made the gesture for a card. The ref didn't book him. So we kind of say on this pod. If the refs are consistent for both sides, which really I think overall with them um, instances, it, it kind of has been. You get on with it, don't you? Um, 
I think they easily both could have gone. Madison could have gone, but it, it ended the day, it didn't happen. And we we can't keep blaming decisions like that when we can't defend. Is the, yeah, is the truth really? Yeah. Well, Christian Joe, before we get into it, I don't want us to turn into like a sledging match on on a uh, on Ryan Yates because his performance was pretty below standard. But it would have been the only good thing he would have done if he'd got James Madison sent off, arguably as well. Um, what did you What did you make of it, or did you think it was the right decision in the end? I think the referee should have been sent to the monitor at the very least. I feel that, you know, personally, like I see, there's so many contradictory things about it. People saying like, "Oh, he shouldn't go down that easily," but then you shouldn't be punching someone in the stomach because someone said, "Oh, it's not much for a punch." But then you shouldn't be making a fist and putting it in someone's stomach anyway. Like I feel like. If you do that on a football pitch, you're giving a referee a massive decision to make. I just think it's incredibly stupid for Madison. I agree with what you said. I feel I've actually had one around. The red card can't come out soon enough. And, you know, I really make a fair point. Yes, you should defend better. And of course, that's the case, especially if you're playing teams of like, quality where the finest, the fine margins are enough to put your goal behind. But equally, like, I just found it very bizarre he wasn't saying to the monitor to at least check that. Like, it's all well and good saying, oh, you know, I didn't book Madison for waving a card. I didn't book Gates for doing the most biggest rectangle I've ever seen in my life and sat on the floor just like that. But um, I still think that, you know, you can't just go, whether it's with any force or not, you can't, like, whether Yates has dropped like a like sack of stones or not, you can't go around doing that at a football pitch. Ultimately, mm. it should be, uh, that's that's a red card offence. Like, it, you know, it doesn't really matter what level that is. So, no, you still want good keen saying be stronger and all that, but equally, you I feel that had that been the other way around, the narrative would have been completely different. It would have been how stupid are you to do something like that on a football pitch and what you're playing at. Like, so I'm not... Yeah, I feel like if the referee... I know, to be fair, I mean, none of us saw it in real time. Like, and I think the referee's probably excluded from that, to be fair, as well, because, you know, we all saw Yates stay down. It was like, oh, what's on the floor for this time? And then, <laughs> like, obviously he stayed down and then obviously the Fox fans are getting angry this, but weren't putting it out and understandably so. Um, on both both sides of the coin, really. I mean, you know, it's not it's not a role anymore. The ref has to stop the game as a head injury. But um, yeah, I mean, when when I saw it back, I was like, that should have been at least sent to the monitor. And the ref goes to the monitor after that and goes, all right, you know what? I don't care. Like you you've gone down too soft. You're stupid. We're calling it that. A yellow card each. I'm sending Yates for anyway. But I, know, I I felt that he's very lucky to be on the pitch to Madison, and it's just. You know, I think it's so done with his decisions now. It's sort of become like, where does this even rank? Someone's punched from our players at the start, and we're not even sure it's the worst decision we've had this season. Like... <laughs> Reese, what did you want to add? Yeah, I think with the monitor thing, the, the issue is is that once a referee has been sent to the monitor, it's like they've got to go with the monitors. They've got to go with the VAR ref's decision, and that and that's the problem they made VAR is that. It's just too much of the old boys club. We saw that, didn't we, with the disallowed goal for the, in the Tottenham Liverpool game, where it's like a chat down a pub. You know, these are meant to be these are highly paid professionals on, you know, six figure salaries, and it was like a, a chat down a pub. Hence, why they balls it up so much. And th- that that was that was something one they introduced VR that they shouldn't that they should have done. They should have got specialist VR refs in there. That was a massive. Yeah, we've said it. We've said it because, loads of times, haven't we? Yeah, because like I said, it is too much the boys club and. You know, we've said it with Lee, haven't we, on this pod before? You know, if if a senior referee's refing is somebody in the VAR ref who's probably, let's say, not got the experience of the ref on the pitch in the Premier League, are they really going to overrule the referee, for example? Mm. I know who was the VAR yesterday. I don't, I don't even know. I can tell you. I mean, Simon yeah. Hooper's pretty established now in the Prem. I can't imagine it would have been somebody more established than him. Maybe I might be wrong in that, but you get what I'm saying. My, my, was, my, and I do agree with Christian. It was stupid. Sorry, Adam. My, my biggest gripe is is you, we've seen penalties and how soft they can get given. So it's exactly the same thing. Whether, regardless of Madison giving him a, I don't know, an Anthony Joshua right hook or or a, a jab, for instance, it's still a punch. It's still something that you shouldn't do. They yeah, always say like when uh, when yeah. you, do when players raise their hands and go, oh well, they know they can't raise their hands to people's faces because they know they're going to get get done for, even if they like just flick them in the ear or whatever. Do you know what I mean? It's 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 so inconsistent. It it just I'm just absolutely fed up with it because I do think it's soft, 
but I also know it's it's still, it's still a wreck at the though. same time. Yeah. It's 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 stupid. Both of them, get get rid of them both because I don't want Ryan Yates on the pitch at the at the time anyway because he was he was we were already down to ten with him on because he was so bad. I didn't want to call it a sledging match. I've already said this. I'm a hypocrite for goodness <laughs> sake. But anyway, let's Wait. let's last last word from from one of you and then we'll move on to the poro. Yeah, um, unfortunately, otherwise. <laughs> Unfortunately, with humans, you're always going to get subjectivity, aren't you? That's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately. But that um, shouldn't be subjective, Reese. He's punched him in the stomach. Like, what more help? What more do you need to find in the violent conduct for that? Like, that's not, oh, that's no, not like, oh, you know, it might that, be I'm yellow, not, it might be a red, it might no, be, I'm not, be I'm not, I'm not, den- I'm, him in the stomach. I'm not denying it could, it could have been a red card, but I'm trying to give the balanced view that. Brian Yates could have also been no... sent off yesterday oh, and was no lucky not to be. Something that blatant. Like, if, we're, not talk, we're not splitting hairs here. He's literally punched him in the stomach. And, and, like... and I'm, I'm saying as well, you know, like people say, like you're saying, if it was on the flip side, Yates had been off. Well, like I said, Felipe got Bruno Fernandes round the neck early on in the season. He oh, he should have got sent off. Sh- yeah, should have yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they should have been sent no. off. Like... He should have got sent off and then rewarded for doing like Premier League. Oh, really? I mean, him in him my, in, get him harder. In, yeah, but... in my opinion, he grab him hard enough. You know, yeah, but it's like um, it's 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 throwing him like home run bar. Because yeah. the, the, the the thing for me is, if Yates had punched Madison and got sent off, I'd have just gone, "You're you're an idiot," and and it'd oh. have been done. Do you know what I mean? Oh. But oh, he was let's let... the rest without that. Yeah, but let's move on anyway. Um, Spurs obviously smell blood. They scored another five minutes later. Um, for me, Yates doesn't stop the cross, which is inevitably there to do a job on Madison and he got nowhere near him. And Benton Core, like whether he meant it or not, he flicks it and it's a great finish from Porro, isn't it, Christian? You have to uh I'll let Reese you did you, you did you do the Van der Ven goal, Christian? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah Reese, I mean it's a great finish from Porro, no denying it. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play Ryan Yates for that one, mate, because there was three people queuing up at the back post. Oh, I know. Like, it was I know bad, what you're saying, marking. stop the cross, but, you know, all, Where's any Aina? three of them, I was just like, you, you, you can kind of understand one because it happens in football, but three players, I mean, Jesus, yeah, I was, was just bad. watching as he was queuing up, I'm like, well, you know, where is, the, where is the team? You yeah. know, are they all like, just... <laughs> just admiring yeah, I mean, it and going to the top corner. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it was typical that we've let a centre half slam a rocket into the top corner, and then we've also let a wing back score his first goal for Tottenham. I think it was yesterday. Power that to very Forest, isn't it? And once that went in, I mean the game, the game just, just completely. It was very much like the first twenty odd minutes. It just completely drifted, and it it got to like a friendly pace, and you just know, you knew that Spurs had us there at arm's length, and. You kind of thought, well, we'll just play at a friendly pace. If Forest do get one back, then we might turn it up a notch again. But you know, it just it just drifted, unfortunately. And the subs, the subs, you know, I just didn't understand the subs personally. I get Morgan Gibbs why I had to come off because he felt his hammy. You know, there's no beating around the bush for that because if his hammy goes, he's out. He's probably out for the rest of the season. We can't afford to lose him. We had he had to come off. But why not bring Gio Reyna on? You know, why, yeah. why, why are we bringing on Dominguez to stick him in a ten when he's a midfielder? Why don't, why don't we bring Ribeiro on rather than Origi, who's just not offering us anything at the minute? Just go out, go on, lads. It's three-one. The game's pretty much lost, but go out there and just put yourselves about, run around a bit, you know, try and get something back in the game. Which, and then he did make the two, two subs. Rainer and Sangari just ten minutes too late. It was yeah. a, it was a perfect chance to say to Sangari, "Look, you're struggling for confidence at the minute. Go out there, try and get, try and impose yourself a little bit. The game's kind of gone, really. And if if we've lost, we've lost because it it was just it's that like was my just kind of, my that was kind of just like we chucked in the towel. And, and let's let's be honest, we all thought. I think yesterday we all predicted. Like Christian said earlier, that with us had you fancied Tottenham to win, and the season won't be defined on yesterday. But he was kind of like, mm, you know, the game just completely drifted away from us, especially with how we ended the first half. Yeah, I think I think that was the main thing. I think yeah. if we'd, have, you know, if we if we'd have finished the first half one 0 down and we played absolutely terrible and we'd lost the game as we did three one, I don't think there'd be 
as much of a frustration because we had that period when we was really in the game and arguably we should have been ahead at half time. So to just come out second half and just let the game drift away from us and gift Tottenham, you know, a two goal lead really in, in the space of minutes was it was just it's just frustrating. But we are a frustrating side to watch because defensively we just we just gone aren't we? Yeah. I mean we I I'm looking at his last six fixtures. I'd be very surprised if we kept another clean sheet this season. I just don't see it. I just hope his his forward line is on form because we're just gonna have to go with the nineties Kevin Keegan mantra of outscoring <laughs> teams basically. Yeah. Um, I know you have to do that anyway, but usually you, when you're the relegation battle, you take a couple of one nils. I just can't see us doing it. Just yeah. defensively, Chris, 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 so many Chris, mistakes. Christian kind of re- like hit the nail on the head there. My gripe is with with a little bit with Nuno in terms of being a reactionary manager. We saw it with Nuno, Nuno uh, Marco Silva, sorry, in midweek where he dragged off three players at 33 minutes. We've seen it at the weekend where Big Ange has dragged off his two essential midfielders for two more ball players, as I do like to call them. I, I, it's the one thing I thought Nuno would bring to us, and that would be that bit more ruthlessness in in a sense. Like, why why did he not take Yates off? Why did he not put Gio Reyna in and and etc. As as we touched on, it's a bit baffling for me. Yeah, I, I agree. I found the subs very bizarre. Like um, at first, like I mean, like we saw players warming up. You thought, okay, like, we saw them in games, and thought, okay, uh, that makes some sense. So he gets a bit of life into midfield. And like when I saw Origi, I was like, okay, not not ideal, but okay. I mean, it still means that you're you're bringing fresh life into midfield, and you know you're giving another attacking option. Fine, that's that's a that's an admirable. <laughs> so obviously we didn't we we saw Gibbs White. Uh, Come, Gibbs White's number come up. Obviously, the initial reaction was like, "What?" And then, obviously, when we saw him sort of like hobble off, it was a bit like, "Ah, okay, that might be why." But to keep Yates on was just ridiculous. I mean, like, like, like you said, like we, I don't want this to turn into a slagging match. We really had bits and pieces today about, oh, you know, we've all got the gender against Yates and this, that, and the other. It's, no, we don't like. But I, I, these people just can't get their head around the fact that if you say something negative about him, it doesn't mean you hate him. And like, I, I personally think that in a blood and run the game, it doesn't matter if we're playing Manchester City or Real Madrid. If it's a blood and run the game where it's like battles all over the pitch, Ryan Yates is the man you want in your midfield. When you're playing a team who had the quality Spurs do, who will keep the ball and who won't give away cheaply, and you have to rely on technical ability to get anything out of them, he is the last person you want on that pitch. And that proves yesterday, like... Within a few minutes, he was incredibly exposed, as proved by the fact he got four fouls in the first 13 minutes. I think I saw this morning he lost seven out of his nine duels, Yates. That's abysmal. Mm. Now, imagine mm. if that was, you know, a certain Ivorian midfielder that uh, some of our fans have now turned into a bit of a hate figure. Like, that was disgraceful as well. Like, you know, <laughs> here is some of our fans booing their own player coming on. And before I get people saying, oh, you know, it was, it was the Spurs fans booing Yates. Like, I literally turned around, unless, I, unless there were Spurs fans in the forest wearing forest scarves and, you know, forest shirts booing them, then no, that wasn't the case at all. Like, it's just deplorable at this moment in time. It's a really, like, like, like it, it, it reminded me of the Palace game, to be honest, like how sort of toxic it was and the sort of elements that our fan base are like that. It's completely unneeded. Like, just because your star boy isn't performing, doesn't you take it out on someone else? We all should be like, you know, behind the whole team here. We've got six games to save a Premier League campaign we waited 23 years for, and you're picking out scapegoats. Like, it's just, it's embarrassing, really. But, no, I mean, the, another issue, I've just seen it a couple of comments, there's uh, quite a few people mentioned it, actually, is that, um, you know, and this, stuff, this is something else that falls under Nuno's room. Here. No one knew who to be captain. Like, yeah. ended up being a Langer, didn't it? Williams first, and when he came off, they, they, they sort of tossed it around like a hot potato, and then it ended up on a Langer's arm. It was like, come on, like, someone take responsibility for the team. Like, mm. it, yeah, it, it, it feels like at times, like, when it clicks with Forrest and it clicks against Fuller, it clicks, I'd say, partially against Palace because obviously we dug in pretty well to get a point against the team that sits in, which is very uncharacteristic of how Forrest has been for at least for the first part of this season, like how often we'll Forrest go goal down and think, well, that's it. But, and obviously, you got a half an hour spell, 25 minutes per Spurs, where we had them on the ropes, half time came at the wrong time, and you know, they changed the game and stepped up a few gears. But there are times also where it feels like we're a team of individuals rather than a collective. And that was one of those moments yesterday. And that does fall under the manager. I'm sorry. Like, I want it to work for Nuno, I really do. But 
something. That's something he has to grab by the balls and go. This stops now. Someone take responsibility. If you if my captain's coming off the pitch, who's going to step up? And I don't want to see that armband thrown around. Just like I don't want it, you have it. Oh, why don't you have it? Why don't you have it? Someone mm. just take responsibility. And slap it on your arm. Like you're representing not in a football club. You're not on a Sunday league pitch. Like yeah. it's got. It, it needs to be better. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. No, I completely agree. Um, Reese, you got anything to add before we go into some selects on it? Thoughts? Yeah. I mean, it, it's not ideal, is it? When you're three-one down, you're seeing the captain's armband being tossed about brand players. It, it should really have just gone back to sell, shouldn't it? He's going to play the ninety minutes. Um, well, Marilla really, even. I, I, yeah, but Murillo's a young lad. Sells is an experienced international keeper, and he was probably he was our man of the match yesterday. Give it to him. He's going to play the ninety. You know that he's going to command into. Like I said, his experience. He's what is he nearly thirty? Should have just gone to him. I mean, it, it just makes it look a bit of a joke, doesn't it? When it's being tossed about, like you know, yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, let's get on to some slept on it for. Before, all right, before Go we on. Do. I, one thing I will say positive, because obviously we are being very sort of down in the dumps in a minute. I do think that the Forest from yesterday probably beat Spurs last season, the same fixture, the way mm. we played. Unfortunately, the Spurs team we played yesterday were also a lot better than the Spurs we played last year. Oh, I know. The so, positivity from them on the train was like, like probably completely polar opposite for when I spoke to Flav last year. They were like, yeah, Ange Ball is great. <laughs> I was like, fair enough. Uh, they all bloody hate we missed we missed start we missed start on him guys unfortunately but yeah. let's move on with that one yeah, definitely <laughs> anyway let's get on to your slept on it thoughts red side of the trent <laughs> slept on it thoughts Having a scan through our slept on it thoughts, everyone's actually quite positive, which I think is quite a good thing, at least, uh, to, to say we've lost. So, keeping our seat in function, one step up, two steps back. The lack of consistency, the lack of fight away from home is uh, endemic. I do not want to be going to Burnley on the last day looking for a wing. That was not the, the positive one, but most of them are, right? Okay. Uh, Yummy Bear, frustrating the opposite of Tuesday night. Didn't take our chances. I blame myself for calling Wood a goal machine to Reese after his first and got punished. Game was fairly even, really, and could have been 3 3. Played out the rest of the season and would be fine. Uh, Reese Coy showed flashes of the Fulham game, but not enough over the 90. Wood has enough credit in the bank for me to accept that shocking miss. Yates, absolutely atrocious from minute one. Never expected to win the game. Focus on us and keep the togetherness and keep chipping away. Come on, your Reds. Psycho was back. My main thoughts uh, this evening are how the hell did Wood hit the post from there? Madison is a dirty. Uh, see you next Tuesday. Uh, and what the hell does Origi bring to this team? Also, Sells and Williams were class again, and I still believe we're staying up. Uh, 55. Um, can't decide if the manager is bipolar or the team. Yates is yellow, neutralised him. Midfield completely overwhelmed. Changes should have come at 2-1 down. Heads dropped and second best for everything second half. We needed a formation change and a bit of reaction from Nuno at 2-1. I do agree. Uh, Sam, great, create chances, don't take chances. Concede, getting boring now. Big, big game on Saturday time to show up. Uh, Ian, um, this team of mercenaries need to show some fight for 23 years out of this league and we're going to throw it away in the probably the worst ever Premier League season. Stand up and fight for the badge, including the manager, looting or fighting. We are not pathetic. Uh, BG Crabtree, there's nothing wrong with losing away versus Tottenham. What is not acceptable is starting Yates and lowering our ceiling of attack. Uh, he will never add anything in the final third. I just don't understand why we're trying to force him on the pitch. He's not the scapegoat. Uh, however, uh, dot, dot, dot. Uh, Lewis Morris, story of our season, guilt edge chances, missed, shocking defensive errors again, our inability to mark players as a joke and Nuno's decisions are becoming a farce. Wouldn't care if he went tomorrow, teams around us starting to pick up points to first half chalk and cheese. Uh, Lee, a um, bit of confidence and bravery in the first half and we looked decent. If Wood would have made it 2-1, might have had been different. Second half, we were toothless, on to the next one. Uh, last of all, but no means least, um, Grant Fellow, slow start, then look the better side. Wood scores either of his very decent other chances. You never know how it plays out. Poor second half, gave them a couple of free shots that killed us onto the onto Wolves, dare I say, must win. I mean, I thought they were more positive than that, but maybe not. Um, I'm just going to do Lee's as well, because obviously he couldn't make it tonight. Um, and he said, um, if uh, we do have to overnight, uh, we do... 
Uh, do we have to overanalyze everything and be bipolar cons- constantly? We played a top four side, gave it a good go, and another day we might get something. Amabamadile continues impressing me, and losing at Tottenham won't be season defining. Bring on Saturday. Um, some player performances, guys. Um, I'm going to make it short and sweet in a sense. Um, Christian, I'm going to give you Matt Sells. Oh, glorious. Um, outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Save from Johnson. Uh, the save he made from range as well. I don't know who hit it, but which looked like it was from where we were, obviously behind the go from well away. It looked like it was going straight into the top corner and suddenly this like white glove just came out of nowhere and put it over the bar. Uh, again, just such a calming ratio. There are times where like he wasn't he wasn't phased at all by the Spurs press whatsoever. It matter if it was Werner, Johnson, who or Son sprinting straight at him. He was just so calm with the ball when you knew exactly where he was gonna put it. I think he slipped once for a kick. That was it. Everything else went pretty much exactly where he wanted it to go. Um and you compare that to what we had before. I'm convinced if we had Turner and goal yesterday, at least well, they probably would have scored and chased down one of his princes, guaranteed. He did, uh, mm. he did that in the ball. He kicked it straight at Sonny with a loop in, like the um, who was it scored a goal? Oh, the oh, Nunes goal against someone. Well, Everton, recently. Everton, uh, Calvert yeah. Lewin did as well at the weekend. It's been a bit yeah, of a theme like, of late. Well, like the kicked it out. All, all Nathan Tyson against Norwich, for those who remember from the Championship era when we lost 2 1 and Kinchesky got sent off. And uh, yeah, I. It, I honestly think that with less, well, a keeper who's just like less assured of the left feet, we would have been in such big trouble last night because that Spurs press were intense. And yet, calmest man on the stage every single time, wasn't phased. You know, obviously, he was taking his time with his goal kicks and making sure it was exactly perfect, which rattled the Spurs fans no ends. I just thought that, you know, Sells, he's just, I just wish we hadn't started this season. And if we do go down, I pray we can keep him because, you know, he's clearly an international class goalkeeper. And, yeah, I just, just a very, obviously, again, a lot of recruitment's maligned, and yeah, we shouldn't be spending £20 million on three different goalkeepers. But the one we've got for five million at the end of the summer, at the end of the window, has been so, so good so far. Mm. Uh, Reese, I, I kind of struggled to kind of give you another one because Matt Sells was our probably standout player, but someone who I thought was impressive first half and then a little bit like bipolar second half was, was, was Anthony Alanga. I thought would he gave the doggy a torrid time first half. In him and Williams did really, really well. And then second half, he just didn't seem to like want to run in behind or anything. What what did you make of him? Yeah, I think he's similar to Brennan Johnson um, from last season in the sense of when he's at it and he's got the ball and you kind of play into his strengths, he's a real threat. Um, as we saw with the goal, put it into a great area. And Chris Wood, as he's doing at the minute, is sweeping most things home. Um, it's just kind of when, you know, you haven't got the ball, it's, it's just kind of like not really in the game as, it, as much, which is, um, yeah, you know, we, 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 it's kind of been one of the things of this season. Haven't we? We, we had that little period where we're getting joy from a player and then we kind of stopped doing it. You know, how many times as a Langa, Lang, for example, had fullbacks on a card and then we decide to stop targeting that side. I, I can oh, loads. I've lost count. <laughs> two foul at West Ham, Hickey at home against Brentford, for example. Um, I mean, you've got we've got to try and get the ball as much to that three behind wood as much as possible um, from an attacking sense. And, they, and they've got to try and put it on a plate for wood, which, to be fair, Al- Alanga did with, um, with that goal. But... He's had a pretty good season. I mean, he's in double figures, isn't he now for, for goal contributions? Yeah, 13 now. Um, I think he'll be a little bit disappointed. He probably hasn't scored a few more goals with kind of the chances he's had. But like I said, he's still, what is he, 21? Yeah. He's, 21, he's one of them players where you kind of hope he'd grow with you. You know, if, if we keep his Premier League status, he's one of them players, as is hudson Adoy on the other side, as is gibbs White as is Murillo, as is Omar Badadeli, these as is Nico Williams probably now. These are the type of players what you know you help hope grow with the club and be successful in the Premier League. So um yeah, I think he's had a, a pretty good season so far and that front four are gonna to have to be on, you know, uh the top of the game because we're gonna need him because like I said earlier, we, we at the other end we can't keep the goals out. So we, we're gonna for sure, need plenty of goals. Um, I mean, when 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 Tyro back, he's got to be back 
his baby soon or nothing? No idea, to be honest. So not really hurt. There's, yeah. Who knew, like, um, knew, knew, it's a bit tight-lipped at Forest, unfortunately, mm. with these certain things. Yeah, well, and you, you kind of... I'm sure, I'm sure I, I can't... I mean, when when was it he got injured? It was the loot, just before the looting game. So what's that? That was about a month ago now. Yeah. Uh, did we say at the time he was going to be out for a month, I think? Well, not really been anything like in terms of his back in training or anything, which, to be fair, is something the social media team put out last time. So it Makes you laugh they went through all that effort and then he got into yeah, like, so we, we, quick. To be fair, he's someone else we kind of need back because, as we saw yesterday, when Wood come off, you know, he's a number one striker at the minute, to be fair to him. We've not really got much else, have we, on the bench? Um, no, like not I said, a, it, it, not a it's a Riga who's huffed and puffed really off-season with not much... Artley, and then you've got, like I said last week, just a young kid on there. You know, you, you know, if you're not going to give him a run out in games like yesterday, when are you kind of going to give him a run out? Really, you, yeah. Just kind of not. You, you you get to the point where you like you may as well just kept someone like Dale Taylor at the club because he's got an absolute you know, world. He, he's, he, you know, the, 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 he's not ready. He just uh, yeah yeah. No, I, no, I, no I, 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 I. I agree. Like you, you may we may as well have stuck a song on the bench. Do you know what I mean? Because if you're not going to yeah. use them, it's the same bloody thing. But anyway, um, we'll get into some uh, results over the weekend and kind of what what our reaction is to that. I know I don't want to rely on too many other teams, but I think it's a good talking point just before we get into the walls. Just a brief um, reaction. Uh, Christian, obviously, Luton and Everton both won. Um, we're on the same level of points with with Luton head on goal difference. Uh, Everton just above us. Um, which has the points deduction thing been like is it been confirmed there's been so many things i've seen on social media i don't have a clue maybe you can like enlighten us uh by social by uh points deduction everton yeah yeah i've been hit with two points yeah two points for definite but then like what's your reaction to them them two winning i mean it was the first time everton won in like 17 games and looting about 11 or 10 what do you make I... of the rest of the season with, with all that? Because we're going to have to, we are going to, unfortunately, unless we keep winning games, we're going to have to start looking over our shoulder a little bit and look, keep like, relying on teams, unfortunately. We've got to look after ourselves. I feel, I feel like um, the, the only thing is how Luton won, I think. I think um, you know, Bournemouth apparently had a bit of a tactical nightmare, a 1 0 up or 1 0, and then just took their wingers off, put Slank in the right wing, and then it was always fell, fell a bit. Um, which is obviously frustrating, but you can't expect favors from other teams, you have to do it yourself. It's still in our hands, it's the main thing. As for Everton winning, I had Everton, if, sorry, I didn't have my keyboard down, I didn't do it, but if I was doing a keyboard, I would have had Everton on there. I look, I looked at their fixtures before the Burnley game, and I was like, they're going to win at least four of their last seven games. They've got Burnley, they've got um, they had Luton, Brentford, us, and I think there was someone else down to Sheffield United, maybe. Sheffield United, I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sheffield, I was like. Yeah. They're going to win at least four of those games. They're going to be fine. Like, so I, I'm not even considering it. at the minute. I think it's a straight shoot to help think Forest and move to that 18th spot. Um, and you know, we I, obviously we have it in us to put going over and get a few points in the ball. I do think, large well, I think I know obviously it's about a disappointment given what's at stake and given that I think people are forgetting just like how good a team Spurs are. I'm not saying that you know, there's, there's no such thing as a free hit at this stage of the season, of course, I understand that, but. You know, like very, very few people would have gone into that game thinking, "Oh yeah, Forest can win it. Forest will win it." Even like, that's some realistic, and they've still got tough games to go. Obviously, you no, know, with Luton, they've got City next week. They've got to go to West Ham. They've got, I think they've got to go to Wolves as well. Like it will come down to home form with Luton. They are really. So yeah, they've got uh, they've got Fulham, Everton, and um, Brentford. Brentford. So, but uh, it, it helps that Brentford's still on out of trouble. Yeah. Brentford will need to go and get a result. Everton will know. Everton could be in a position where they go there and win. They can stay up, regardless yeah. of any points deductions. So, you know, these aren't the only real game you can look at and say, okay, what they've got left. You can probably say, put chalk up a win in their column. It's probably against Fulham. I'd fancy to beat Fulham at home, which is something riding on it. So, you know, there's lots of twists and turns to go. Yeah, as a uh, Forest, former Forest manager, used to, wanted to say quite a lot. But, <laughs> um, you know, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm still, I think if we lose, Against Wolves, I'll be a bit more worried because yeah. we've we've got a great chance next week to get a bit of a buffer, or at least a three point buffer, which sort of gives us a games 
sort of recovery, if you like, if we mess up somewhere along the line. But then you look at what we've got as well. I mean, like, yeah, okay, some of these games are away from home. Yes, our away form's been patchy, but you know, if you apply a half hour against Spurs, who okay, much better than anything else we're going to play against away from home this season? If you apply that half hour against, you know, Sheffield United against Burnley, we should we we should be winning those games. So, yeah, not going to be easy, but ultimately still in our hands first and foremost, and that's the most important thing. I'd be more worried. I I, I wouldn't swap our position for Luton's, put it that way. And there's still a possibility that we could get points back. So mm. it's not all hope is lost yet. Yeah. Reese, anything to anything different? Well, I mean, the main the main positive is it's still in our hands. I mean, when you're in a relegation battle, if someone says to you, look, it's in your hands, you do the business, you'll stay up, you take it on the you take it on the chin. Um I mean, of course, the results weren't good for this this weekend. I mean, Everton, that was their first win, win since they actually beat Burnley in the reverse fixture. I mean, the <laughs> goal, I'm not sure if any of you have actually seen the goal. Yeah, I've, was seen, I've seen it. Parler from one of our um, great goalkeepers in Arrow Murich. Um, I guess the little negative there is it's kind of got Calvert Lewin. That means he's got two in two, where he, he was really struggling back. He had that barren run of form, didn't he? Look, there's still a long, long way to go. There's still a lot of football to be played. Everyone, everyone thinks the likes of teams playing Sheffield and Burnley that they're, you know, that they're a walkover. Well, Luton lost to Sheffield United at home, for example. So that they still, and they're not. I know <clears throat> everyone's saying Burnley and Sheffield United are down, and I agree. I think they will go down. But why there's still a possibility they'll still be going at it. There's still a lot, like Christian said, Brentford need a result. And then you look you know, like you see people on obviously social media, etc. Or that 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 X team's gonna be on the beach by that time. Well, you look back to last season when Fulham absolutely thrashed Leicester when they was on the beach at the back end of the season. West Ham had a European final, they ended up beating Leeds at the back end of the season. So and I and guarantee you in this league, the difference in this league is, you know, a chairman will be saying, Well, Tell you what, lads, you finish three places higher up the table. It's another two and a half million per position, I believe it is. So mm. there's no, there's still no easy games yet. Um, there's a lot of football to be played, and like I said, the remain the positive is it's in our hands. We have got to do the business, and that starts Saturday. It's a must-win game Saturday. Christian hit the nail on the head. You've got the chance of getting that three-point buffer again, and um, with Luton going to Manchester City and. You feel now, City as you always are at this stage of the city. At this stage of the season, you're in the zone. Um, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a shame they've got Champions League games against Madrid either side, I believe. But they're kind of in that zone now, Manchester City. And they can rotate and bring in another world class player for another. So we'll see. I mean, we we've just got to do the business ourselves. And if we can get, if we can win Saturday and. I'd say Everton away then is a must not lose. We cannot go there and get beat. If we go go there and get four points for the next two, I'd be pretty content with that. And that'd that would put us in a good stead. The City game is one of them where, you know, you can't treat it as a bonus because, you know, every game's vital, but it would be a bonus if we got something against them. And then you look at the last three games of the season, Sheffield United might be down by then. I know. The caveat to us is the fact that they'll probably love to take us down with them because they hate us. Chelsea are an absolute basket case. That game at home is winnable, in my opinion. I mean, Burnley should have won, could have won there last week with 10 men. Sheffield United have drew at home with them yesterday. You just don't know what you're going to get with Chelsea, do you? Um, no. Entertainment, for sure. <laughs> um, and then, obviously, last day of the season is Burnley, which you don't know if we'll... <laughs> Then we might be down by then. We might need to go there and need some. So we'll we'll see. There's a lot of, a long way to go. Yeah, I mean, we had kind of our delight in midweek. This weekend, it's not been as good. You know, we've seen. You know, I didn't know Luton and, and Bournemouth had more than double figure fans, but clearly they have this week with all I'm seeing them on. It's all I've seen on Twitter. So um, <laughs> I know I, I have enjoyed really like people saying, "Oh, Bournemouth won't do us a favour." Well. To be fair, they did beat Everton in the last minute and it was 3-0 down against Luton and beat them. So let them have that love, little love in them two clubs. It's still in yeah. our hands. We've just got to do it ourselves. And like yeah. I said, it, st- it starts on Saturday. You know, the, the yeah. ground's got to be up again how it was against Palace and Fulham. And, we, you know, I just the thought of staying up above Luton 
after all you see from the stuff you see on Twitter and that would be, yeah, a moment to say there. Yeah. Well, we are speaking to Dan, aren't we, uh, Christian, in the week from from Wolves, um, the Wolves fan who, who got you, he, he got you a, uh, an appearance at Molyneux. Um, I mean, I don't know if like, they forgot if they're going to forget like Morgan White's the next player because we've got so much gripe with PGML L between us clubs. We might be a bit united in a, in a, in some sort of front. Um, how do you see that game going? In what what's your what's your first thoughts of it? Um, off the I bat? never thought we'd have this sort of like weird alliance with Wolves, but it's amazing what um, incompetence can do to people, isn't it? But um, <laughs> Ago and then and then obviously because Gibbs White's come to us and there was a bit of those there was like some housery obviously last season in the cup and him get, and him being an ex player it kind of ramped it up a little bit and then I think like we've, we've got, kind of come back down to a, an even keel now yeah there's something like that um, as I think the game goes initial thoughts is going to be the most contentious controversial nil nil draw in Premier League history maybe one that's shown. For like years and years to come on Premier League years, like we one that we've shown at refereeing classes of how not to referee a football match. There'll be about fifteen disallowed goals, a hundreds like bar stoppages, penalty appeals for GBH that go unpunished because they can't decide who they hate more out Forest or Wolves. <laughs> uh, it's just oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> serious to say, um, I'm joking aside. Sorry. Um, they've been a bit weird recently, Wolves. And they've been a, they've been a bit off. I know, obviously, they're very unfortunate that the West Ham's get a point uh, because of that ridiculous decision. But, um, which, yeah. But, I don't know. They've they just, like... It seems like they've got to a point where they're pretty much safe. They've sort of fizzled out a little bit. And um, I think, given we've got more on the line than they have, I think we can use that to our advantage. I know what Reese just said about teams not being on a beach. I'm not saying the Wolves are, but... They've, they've kind of got their playing tickets to go to the mid table, wouldn't they? Really, so I, I think the European dream is pretty much gone for them now. So all we can sort of do is secure the path. They look pretty okay, I think. I think the last time we set the table, I, I don't really look beyond the bottom five anymore, so I'm not entirely sure where Wolves are. Eleventh, yeah, yeah, they're in the eleventh, so, yeah. So I don't know. I mean, uh, given home advantage, given the Nuno factor as well, I feel like we can get a win. It would probably be a, a decent game. Um, but, yeah, I think that we kind of need to win it, really. Um, yeah, I think this we'll have that little bit more want than them. And, yeah, um, what's your score prediction? Through. I'm going to go for 2-1. Um, yeah, I'm going to go for 2-1 Boris. I think the Nils done a very good job there, but the, the, day, the data nerds will tell you their underlying data is not good. And I think that we can maybe exploit that. So, yeah, yeah 2-1 Boris. Well, Lee's gone for two one as well. Uh, Reese, are you making it a three quarter full house? <laughs> um, I mean, I'm just looking at the table now with Wolves. I guess it'd be a string to Gary O'Neill's bow, wouldn't it? That if he did get them in the top half. So I'm expecting a tough game. I don't think there'll be any of this personally over there on the beach and thinking about whereabouts in the old guard they'd like to go to. Um. <laughs> What I do enjoy about Gary O'Neill was, yeah, they got some stinking decisions early on in the season, but we had a decision against them up there and he told us to get on with it. So I did enjoy him whinging like a little kid this weekend, these managers who, one, when it get, when it goes against them, it's the worst thing ever, but everyone else has to get on with it when it goes against them. Um, you know, he, I think he's believing his own hype a little bit because he's been linked with Manchester United but um <laughs> <Blimey. laughs> I didn't know that uh, uh, yeah well I mean god some of the people been linked with Manchester United it was it was linked at one point well, as a coach those three might be linked at some point yeah oh. well <laughs> um but no he's, he's done a brilliant job I mean I had him in my top three managers of the season last season he's proved himself that he's a really good young English coach as much as sometimes I don't like his demeanor but what Premier Manager Premier League managers kind of demeanors do you like um <laughs> obviously there's a Nuno factor <laughs> they haven't forgot about it. Gibbs White mate Jesus well, I know that. they'll I know never they forget are, that I've seen I'm, I'm not sure if you guys <laughs> seen on Twitter the other day the picture of Gibbs White in, on the exercise bike and all the exercise bikes to the side looked like they were sticking two fingers up and the <laughs> Wolves fan had put this is Gibbs White when it comes back to Molly now. Um, <laughs> so no they've definitely not forgotten about that um 
you know, speaking to a, a couple of guys out of fours, I said that that Tifa would have been even better to bring out against Wolves, but I, I think this, they didn't want inside to riot, I think was the reply. So, um, <laughs> boring. <laughs> with, with, yeah. With, if I'm going to be honest with my head, I think it'll be the same score as last year and the same score as the away game this year. And I think it will be a 1 1. Um, but so I'm going to go with that, mate. Um, hopefully we can nick it, but I just have this feeling it might be a draw. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll I, 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 it won't surprise if it kind of went how it did last year, where we scored first half, was holding on a little bit, and then they scored. I think was it last ten minutes? Daniel Podence scored, I believe. Um, yeah. After spitting, <laughs> but we're not yeah. going to down that route. But, I mean, yeah. The, I mean, hopefully I, we can do it because we need it. It's a must win. Yeah, I mean, Wolves are a bit... I mean, Mateus Cunha come back at the weekend and Aitan Ori, unfortunately, went off injured for them and he's been in right good form for them. He's been playing further forward, yeah, weirdly. Yeah. He's been playing like attacking midfield because they've got no Huang, no... And then no Neto, which is... Yeah, I mean, he's I'm, I'm happy about that because Neto is a cracking player. player. Uh, just got... got got cheese string for hamstrings on sort unfortunately um so yeah i think it's it's a it's a game where we can definitely take advantage of of some areas of the pitch i don't want to say that that phrase that's been banded around this season so many times and every time it has we've just done nothing with it um but no i think it's it, it, it the the whole gibbs white thing the as needing to probably get a win kind of adds to the occasion so hopefully the atmosphere will be really good the 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 the, the atmosphere between the sets of supporters will be really good. So I think it, it sets itself up to be a really cracking game. Um, I think if we can get into that flow like we did in the first half against Spurs and get some confidence like we did against Fulham as well and take our chances, there's no reason why we can't take Wolves apart and actually beat them. I, do, I, think, I really feel like we can, we can beat them. I'm going to go for a 3-1 win because... It's inevitable we'll let a goal in. Um, Max Kilman is like the biggest man I've ever seen in my life. I'm sure he'll probably nod one in. So I'm going to go for three one. Um, it'll be a it'll be a, it'll be a good game. I think it'll be there'll be some some big tackles going in and some fist pumps going on from certain players and maybe some fingers and ears hopefully. So we'll we'll leave it at that. We'll probably see you in the midweek for the preview with Dan. Um, I'm sure we'll, there's a lot to talk about um, between us. So. Until next time, we'll see you then. Come on, you Reds.